A very common question we are asked all the time, why prep? Why even bother? Well, there's lots of reasons why I'll show you in this video. But understand that we have things possibly coming, World War III, EMP, all that stuff. Oh, craziness. Well, maybe not. Even if you're just looking at a natural disaster or local problems in your community, it's still good to prep. And nobody says you have to go outside and build a huge Fort Knox doomsday bunker. It's not about that. It's about being prepared, level-headed, being prepared for whatever might come. So here's eight things you want to take a look at, reasons why we prep. Number one, peace of mind. Are you aware grocery stores only have about three days of food? That's it. Even though the shelves always look stocked, what happens is every day a new truck comes in. Just by average shopping, et cetera, they have what's called a just-in-time method where the, the grocery store doesn't want to keep stuff in the back. That's not their goal because there it can spoil. So what they want to do as soon as it comes in the truck, it goes right on the shelf, then a customer takes it, and as they stock up the shelves, they do rotations. But if we're talking about literally, for some reason, the truck stopped coming into the grocery store, the food stops coming in, then three days worth, well, most of the food's going to be gone. That is in normal peacetime. Everything's fine. If we're talking about a very bad scenario, whatever the situation might be, I have a friend of mine who lives in San Francisco. In 1989, the earthquake, the grocery store was emptied in two hours. Two hours. I don't know about you, but I like having my family fed. I like having a lot of the basic necessities. So a peace of mind, it's really simple. You always just want to have stuff on hand, you know, because, you know, something drastic might happen. You never know. But I want you to understand, medically speaking, as a doctor, I'll tell you that the more stressed you are, if you're stressed about, you know, situations like that, you, re you actually produce a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol is the stress hormone, causes all kinds of problems, causes belly fat, it's horrible. And even heart disease is linked to this as well. So instead of pulling your hair out and worrying about everything, just have at the very least a few days worth of stuff. That way, if something happens, at least you'll be prepared for a little while. Number two, it saves time. In emergencies like natural disasters, have you ever tried to go to the store during that time? Or maybe you're going to the store and you're looking around, you're like, whoa, what's going on? And you didn't catch the news that like a hurricane or tornado or something's coming and people flood to the stores and start buying things quickly. So save time now. You know, it doesn't cost a whole lot extra to have a case of whatever canned food you like or possibly some extra rice and beans or, you know, things that obviously store for a long time very well. Instant potatoes, for example. Just buy some extra. And that way, if an emergency does come, some kind of natural disaster or you lose power for a couple of days, instead of trying to get it from the store, save yourself some time and have that stuff at home. Use it for the few days. When everything's back to normal, replenish that little stock and off you go. Number three, save money. In case you're under a rock, there's been a lot of inflation lately, not to mention even price gouging in a lot of circumstances. So look, we used to go to the dollar store. Remember way back then that a can of corn at the dollar store was actually a dollar. Now it's what, a dollar 25 for certain items. So today it's a dollar 25. Yesterday, metaphorically speaking, was a buck. What's it going to be tomorrow? Dollar 50? Personally, I'd rather buy the food now. It's going to last years and years and years and years and years. Buy it now so that way next year before the price even goes up, if you have a little extra money, 10 bucks every time you go to the store, just pick up a few extra cans of whatever you like to eat. Even more so, save money in buying bulk. When we talk about preparedness, buying bulk is always a really good thing. I'm always looking for sales, by the way. You know, every time you see something on sale, I'd rather buy my cans of corn half price, the normal price. So, you know what, if I'm going to put 10 bucks every time I go to the grocery store, I find the stuff on sale and do it that way and save money. Ultimately, you should always shoot for self-sufficiency. I mean, if you can garden, garden's relaxing, by the way. I'm not saying I'm a master gardener. I'm not. But I enjoy gardening and I love getting literally the fruit of my labor. Having like tomatoes right off the vine that I planted. Look, I made that tomato. It's a beautiful thing. So anyway, the biggest thing is you don't have to worry about where your food comes from. Save money now. Get the wholesome food and that way you don't have to stress about it. Number four, a healthier lifestyle. And since you probably are buying things in bulk or in large amounts, you can make more food from scratch. It takes a little uh, patience and time to do this if you haven't been doing it. But you're looking at wholesome foods, whole foods. I am a huge proponent of what's called nutritional therapy, literally making my body heal itself and making it so I'm as healthy as possible. That way you stave off disease by simply eating the right foods. I mean, we all know that going to a fast food restaurant is, is quick and easy, or maybe you want to step it up and go to a sit down restaurant. I understand that, but doing it on your, you know, bringing the stuff in and make it from scratch is going to make you much healthier and happier in the long run. So having the food and water, the real basic wholesome ingredients is a really good thing. It helps you develop a more 
wholesome lifestyle as far as food goes. And then when the disaster does come, you actually have better foods for you during those times. Number five, develop community. There's a lot of preppers around, by the way, more than you know. Before we even moved here, we had this huge following of people who did preparedness and stuff. We move here, even on the street when we got here, they're like, oh my gosh, you moved out of my street. They're everywhere. It's just, I think a lot of preppers kind of like, you know, keep it under their sleeve and don't let people know. But having a community where you can work together, you know, train together, you know, develop skills together, even just gardening and pick up tidbits, it's beautiful, especially in our day right now where community is like quickly uh, disappearing. Um, but overall, with Goshen Prepping, I love it because I've actually developed a community, even with followers. And it really, even though I know a lot about prepping and preparedness, I've learned a lot of stuff, even just connecting with the people who watch the channel. And even more so, are you ready for this? Especially this is why we started Goshen Prepping. Helping out people is what it's all about. And if you're not doing that, at least, let's say you're like, I'm, I'm a gardener. I don't need the Goshen Prepping or any type of prepping channel. That's good. But how about actually passing the information along to somebody else? Not to mention the old adage is so true. You'll never know it well enough until you teach it. Teach it to somebody else and you're like, oh, that's why I add that fertilizer or whatever the case may be. So having a community is one of the best things in the world when it comes to prepping. Number six, it keeps you informed. And in reality, you can't just prep and prepare without watching for potential problems. That's what we do. We're like, you know what? This area has tornadoes. So let's prepare for a tornado. We see possibly nuclear problems. Let's prepare for nuclear. Let's, and the list goes on and on. How many different things that potentially could hit you and your family? So you learn how to prep for that. And of course, you keep informed to see if things are heading in that direction. Having the intelligence, not intelligence, but intelligence data coming in to be able to prepare for things is incredible. Now, it's also, when it comes to about that, it's adaptability. Because I'll be honest with you, even if you watch the news and you do nothing about it and there's like some kind of tornado is heading your way, you sitting in your chair is not going to be a good thing. You have to be adaptable. This is huge, by the way. Something I think preppers really should strive for is this next level of being adaptable. And that, when it comes to prepping, that's the key. Because you can't always focus on, this is exactly what I'll do. Because if you have a plan A, guaranteed you're going to have problems, so you need to have a plan B and a plaid C. You can't be rigid. You need to be reactive to it. And this is a great life skill, by the way, not just for preparedness. Number seven, it gives you a purpose in life. Unfortunately, right now we seem to live in a time of hopelessness. Depression runs rampant. There's so much division in, in people right now. It's so sad. And we used to always get along. I miss the days when literally your neighbors, no matter what political view they had, no matter whatever view they had, you could still get along and talk and hang out together. And I find that a lot of people are having this hopelessness because there isn't really any sense of purpose in their life anymore. I go to my job, then I come home, watch TV, and then that's it. But no, when you get into preparedness, especially when you get into community and you know trying to strive to learn how to adapt or make something from scratch, it really gives you a purpose because you're like, oh, things are not happy right now, by the way. You know, it's not a fear mongering thing. It's looking at the world right now and saying, wow, this is a pretty dangerous time we live in and preparing for it. But even more so, you're not just being responsible for you, but your own life and not to mention the people around you. The, by the way, the government, no matter how much you think the government's there to help you, no matter how much in some cases they are there to help you, some, certain organizations in the government, you can't depend on them. You want to. They may want to help you in certain circumstances, but you can't depend on that always happening, especially in a disaster, because you know what? We just went from an ambulance call here and an ambulance call here to now ambulance calls everywhere. So what are you going to do for that? You prepared for every contingency. Now, even more so when it comes to prepping and prepared because of this, organization is the key. I, and you may not be an organized person, but as you prepare and start to log down things you have and say, you know, I'm kind of missing some extra kidney beans here, that organization helps you too and gives you a better focus on your life as well. Because when it comes to having that purpose, the purpose starts putting all your ducks in a row and you start getting, not to mention skills, but confidence boosters. You start feeling better about yourself, about your household and your family. And number eight brings your family closer. There is nothing better than television and video games to bring a family together. Screen time, kids. We know that stuff does not bring a family together. It's just the opposite. So what we do in our family, I'm not saying we don't turn a TV on now and then or possibly a video game now and then, but that's rare. Instead, we spend time as a family. And what's cool about that is when it comes to prepping and preparedness, again, you can just do very simple stuff, stockpiling some stuff. I teach my kids, this is why we have extra food. You never know what's going to happen. But even more so, we spend the time using our gear. Hey, kids, this next weekend, we're going camping. Yay, they get all excited. Are we going to go in our camper, which we have one? 
Are we going to go backpacking? Are we just going to send a tent out in our property? Send a tent up in our living room? We do that sometimes. Are we going to turn off the breaker of the house and see how well we'll do? Are we going to do that to see what we need to buy? As you do these things, listen, your kids are happy to follow along with whatever you do. Or even if it's just a husband and wife, it brings you closer together as you do different things. It brings a little like air of kind of like fun in your life. Because listen, the more you sit in your house in that really, really comfy chair and have three billion channels on TV in front of you, air conditioner blowing, refrigerator giving you nice cold drinks, you kind of like lose this uh, sense of life. Have you noticed that? That literally when things get too easy and just sit around all the time, you kind of lose that lust for life and the, the spice of variety and all these fun things. It just kind of disappears. And next thing you know, you just kind of like stare at the TV all day. And the next day comes around, I'm going to stare at the TV more. No, if you break into it, especially just prepare, prepping and preparedness, then you're going to grow closer together as you start learning how to do things. And again, it doesn't have to be building that crazy bunker in your backyard. I'm not even saying the bunker's crazy. That's not what I'm saying. But you can start small, just stockpile a few things here. Oh, we just got a new BioLite stove. Let's go ahead and get some pine cones and sticks in the backyard and make a fire with it. Get a tent, do a little camping. All those things that literally, you ready for this? In past times, that was normal. That was the standard for life. It's only today, all these modern conveniences are like, oh, you really want me to be in a tent where there's bugs outside? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. That's where the fun stuff happens because it's not just about disasters. It's being prepared for everything, you and your family. Of course, you want your family to grow closer. So there we go, guys. There's eight things you want to focus on when it comes to prepping. Don't get in the mindset that all preppers are crazy. I'm sure there's some of them who literally, mentally, have go probably go a little too far. But when it comes to stocking up and preparing for disasters, you can't go too far. It's your life that's on the line in case those things happen. So work your way slowly, just start heading that direction. Share this video with family members, by the way, because there's always people who are like, ah, why would I prep? And just say, listen, this video is only a few minutes long. Just watch this and understand, because it's not about going crazy in preparedness. It's about simply just heading in that direction, do a little preparedness here and there. But look, we live in a world where all bets are off, anything can happen. So why not just have a little security in that direction in case something happens? Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.